forbid, God forbid that during black women's, I'm not one of your little friends. I'm going to really give you something to cry about black mama month that black women have a preference. <laughs> God forbid we have standards. <laughs> God forbid we got to listen to bands <laughs> during black women's black mama month. to make this video i told myself i wasn't gonna say nothing not a ting about this i really just want to stick to my dating shows you know it's taking a minute i know um netflix about to come out with uh what's that show it's gonna be a, a, all the gay people on the island or whatever definitely gonna cover that because i know that's, that's gonna be a hot gay ass mess and i'm here for it um, but, um, yeah, I just kind of just want to stick to my dating shows. And I know the, the Bachelorette's coming out soon. It's going to be the, bl the Black Bachelorette. So I can't wait for that. She's dark-skinned like me. Just like me. Beep, 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 beep. So I'm excited about that. Um, did I just remix the Just For Me song? <laughs> what the fuck? Um, so, yeah, I just want to really stick to that. But I said, you know what? Since this kind of covers dating a little bit... I'll talk about this because this Ebony K. Williams shit was, it's just, it got, it, it's gotten out of hand. It's gotten out of control. And I really can't believe how far it's gone. And so I just want to, you know, share my thoughts on it. Before I continue though, um, I just want to say happy Cinco de Mayo to those of y'all who was celebrating. Y'all, Cinco de Mayo this year took your girl out. Um, my God. My Cinco de Mayo was very niggery. I, I, I had a I had a nigga de Mayo. Like, it just was ridiculous. Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Um, But I, to be quite honest, I think I just really hit a low point Friday. Some, some things have been happening to me. Some things have been happening to me that I haven't shared. And I'm, you know, I don't, I think people think I share everything and I really don't. Okay. But... I think that I've been going like this slowly and nigga de Mayo falling on a Friday. It just, it just, it was a, it was a recipe. It was the perfect recipe for a complete disaster. And y'all, cha, I just had a, Ooh, Lord, just keep me in prayer. Um, something really bad happened to me recently, like a series of events. And I think I just been, pushing through it and just working because that's just always been my life. You know, you just keep, you just keep going on. Like there's really no time to cry. There's no time to, you know, like you just have to keep going. You just have to keep going. Nobody cares. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody, nobody's going to cry for you, Argentina. Nobody gives a fuck. Okay. So you just got to keep it moving. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like as a black woman, fuck it, I'll do it. Like that's like literally like that's just our lives and I feel like a lot of you probably can relate to that that unfortunately you've been a strong black women's since you came out your mama pussy and so you just gotta roll with the punches and but these punches are getting kind of strong lord uh, they getting Mike Tyson strong Jesus please <laughs> please be a fence um so you know what if you believe in God you know you believe in Jesus you believe in God you Allah you know say a prayer for me please I am at a really rocky place but as your sister i'm still gonna you know be here still gonna give you content as much as i can in between <laughs> the breakdowns <laughs> um also y'all coupe comes out this friday coupe coupe nubana sele coupe 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 um it comes out this friday um another man on look i know again for haitian flag day i will be doing a haitian flag party at Rocksteady here in Atlanta. So if you are in Atlanta, it's gonna be uh it's gonna be May 17th. Haitian Flag Day is the 18th, uh, but on Wednesdays they have Haitian nights at um Rocksteady. So you know what we're just gonna party into the 18th. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna party into the 18th. It's gonna be very Haitian. Like I'm gonna be 
listen, I'm gonna sing some songs, but also, like, I will be playing all the Haitian shit. Like, we are going to be, it's gonna be a very Haitian night. So please come out. You don't have to be Haitian to celebrate, but you do have to love Haitians to celebrate, okay? So please come out, and if you follow me, I would love, love, love to meet you. So many of you guys came out, came out the last time that I did like, my Coupe song release. So please, please come out. I really enjoy meeting y'all. Y'all really give me life and y'all are so sweet and so loving. And honestly, I really, really wouldn't be able to do a lot of the stuff I do if it wasn't for your support throughout the years. Like y'all have been, played a big part in my journey. So anytime we can hang out together, please, 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 please come do it. Come hang out with me. Come have a good time. It is my country's flag day and it's a very special day in my culture. So I would love, 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 love to see you guys for a Haitian Flag Day celebration, May 17th at Rocksteady. All right now, Kunya Luganos, now I know you're fini, I know you're fini, Kunya, we can't get into that tea, okay? Let's talk about Ebony K. Williams. Before I play the first clip that went viral, I just wanna preface this by saying this. Unless you are uplifting her, Unless you are mentioning her name to pray for her and to uplift her, keep Ebony K. Williams' names the fuck out of your mouth. Like, let's just let's just start with that. Keep Ebony's name the fuck out of your mouth. Okay, I'm getting my Will Smith volume on. Now I gotta get my Will Smith on. Now I gotta slap niggas, okay? Keep Ebony's name out your mouths. This is a, an almost 40-year-old woman who is an attorney, an author. A television star, a television show host, okay, an entrepreneur. This woman makes a certain amount, okay? This woman, what she does takes a certain amount of effort and a certain amount of time. This woman obviously knows what will work for her. And what will not her having a job preference her having a tax bracket preference for who she wants to be in a relationship with there is nothing wrong with that there is nothing wrong with that absolutely nothing and I I am now inclined to believe that black women truly are the only group that is pushed to lower our standards and our preferences. We're the only ones who are pushed and knocked down and kicked down to accept just what's out there. You know, which it's sad. It's really just, it's scary to see. It's sad to see. It's scary. Like this shit is scarier than a Freddy Krueger movie at this point. Like I'm scared. For real, for real. Like, legitimately scared of y'all niggas. And you women out there who uphold that and join the men in pounding down on women like her who say, well, you know what? This is what I won't date. So, first off, let's obviously start off with the clip that went viral. So, Iyanla Van Zandt, I believe last month or the month before, she went on The Breakfast Club and she was talking about how uh, women are masculine. She has a point and we're going to dissect all that. But um, she's been on this, you know, y'all women's are masculine tour. And so Ebony invited her on her show on The Grio to talk about that. And there is a moment where Ebony literally tells her, Iyanla, I'm about to be 40. I have dated all types of men. I'm doing something wrong. Please enlighten me. Please check me. This is the moment right here. I know that you've said that you cannot teach a man or tell a man how to be a man. So I will not ask you to indict men in this question. But I do want you to speak, Ayanla, to how women need to, uh, I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns right, how we can create and not build 
when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources, and some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a bus If he owns driver? the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. See, that's a one. problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Okay. Because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about mm -hmm. that. But the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who mm. we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver mm. if he was, if he loved driving the bus, if he was a man of integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well. Now, I remember seeing that clip initially on my timeline and literally thinking, they about to eat my sister up. They are about to eat my sister up. They about to eat my sister up. They about to eat my sister up because <laughs> <laughs> That's what y'all do. <laughs> y'all love dragging women. Like, it's just what it is, right? I said, they are going to eat my sister up during Black Women's I'm Not One of Your Little Friends Black Mama Month. I mean, it's over for you, girl. <laughs> baby, they done got their knives and forks out, baby. They about to slice and dice your ass quickly, okay? <laughs> but I saw this clip and I said, you know what? Let me actually go watch the full interview, right? So first, I want to play you this segment in full, and then we'll talk about it. We're getting those terminal degrees, those JDs, MD, PhDs. We also are the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs, uh, along with Latina women in America. Pew Research said that women are now out-earning men, out-earning men yes. in 22 yes. of the largest cities in America, including where I live, New York, D.C., L.A., you name it. When we talk, and I know that you've said that you cannot teach a man or tell a man how to be a man. So I will not ask you to indict men in this question. But I do want you to speak, Ayanla, to how women need to, uh, I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns right, how we can create and not build. When some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources. And some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a bus driver? If he owns the bus. If he owns no. it, if he owns the bus, See, that's, a problem. that's a problem. That's a problem okay. because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about mm -hmm. that, but the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who mm. we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver mm. if he was, if he loved driving the bus, if he was a man of integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date a bus driver. But we think that it's another human being's responsibility to give us what we need instead of us building together. I can build with a bus driver. I'd have my little stash over on the side in my prenup, but I could build with a bus driver. <laughs> so I think some of the criteria that we look for in the reality of today keeps us unhappy, keeps us angry, mm. keeps us in balance. And then when the men show up, we want to beat them up because they're not living up to our standards and criteria. And, and it's not working, beloved. It's just not working. So it's not that it's bad or wrong. It's obsolete. Mm -hmm. It's obsolete. Mm. We have to come up with a new way of being. I don't believe in carrying a man. A man has to do for himself. My son got his first job when he was nine. Nine, okay? Because you're a nine. black man. You will know how to take care of yourself. But I think the way we measure it, it's, it's just obsolete. 
I think that's a factual analysis. Uh, for Whatever we want, expect, we're told we were going to get, we got to look at the numbers and what's available on the marketplace. As I'm re-watching the clip, it's like, I can see that my sister Ebony can, can see that she about to get her ass ate up, right? Because you see a pause. Like, she didn't want to answer that question because she knew whether she said yes or no. First of all, she knew if she said yes, it wouldn't have came across authentic. And she, she knew if she would have said no, that would have been bad. So for her saying if he owns the bus, to me, her saying that was her kind of trying to save herself. But ma'am, you said nothing wrong. You said nothing wrong. I've seen people say, oh, she was so smug when she said it. If he owns the bus. What is wrong with her wanting to date someone who owns the bus? What is wrong? I, I, I want to start right there. What is wrong with that? Why do y'all think something is wrong with her wanting to date the guy who owns the bus? Literally, when you watch the full clip, she says, like she breaks down the statistics of... The, how women are out earning men across the spectrums, not just black women out earning black men, but women in general, black women, Hispanic women in the, uh, in the entrepreneurial space, how we have started to, you know, out earn our men. Right. And she's saying, how do we position ourselves to still date people who you know, we are out earning while still keeping our femininity, right? And so I don't know how you watch that. And then Ayanla, Ayanla poses her that question and she says, well, if he owns the bus, what is wrong with that? What is wrong with that? Now, if you continue to listen, I think as you hear what Ayanla is saying, well, you know what, if he... I would date a bus driver, right? I would date a bus driver if he loved driving the bus, if he had good character, basically, right? Which is why for me, I wish Iyanla wouldn't have asked her that. I wish Iyanla would have asked her, character-wise, what are you looking for in a man? Because really, that's what Iyanla was getting to, is that it's not always about what a man makes, it's about his character. And that's true. Right? You do want a man who has good character. How many women do we see out here dating the millionaires and the billionaires, you know, and their character is disgusting? How these women are treated. Yes, they're, you know, at all the fancy events. And yes, they're driving all the fancy cars, but they're continuously going online and telling us about how these men are disgusting to them, right? So we see it all the time. So a man making billions of, uh, of dollars, a man making a millions, a man out earning you doesn't mean that he's necessarily good for you because he might have bad character, right? But I think that there's another side that we're not listening to, which is black women. You know, I can't speak for all women, but I can speak for black women. We're tired. Like we're literally tired of carrying the financial load. That's what I think Ebony is saying is that she doesn't want to be the one to carry the relationship financially because inevitably it does make you masculine. Whether you want to be or not, the man treats you like you're a, a, a motherfucking nigga. Like he treats you like you're a nigga. Like he treats you like you're one of his niggas because you're making more than him. Have you guys ever... Make some noise if you've ever dated someone who makes less money than you. Like, if you are a woman right now, black women, make some noise if you've ever dated a man who made less than you. Keep clapping. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I'm asking that because we do it every day. <laughs> we literally do it every day. And... I think like the huffing and puffing that people had for Ebony with this first initial clip, I just was like, wait a minute now. She says she wants to date the man who owns the bus. She said nothing wrong. That is her preference. But let's not act as though this is not a woman who hasn't done this. The girl said she's tried. <laughs> like she
She's done it. She's dated across the, the financial spectrum. That's what she said. And she's dated races. It's not working. Are we going to sit here and act as, as if black women don't date down every day? Ebony K. Williams and Ayanna Van Zandt, they have uh, very different opinions when it comes to dating men on their level. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a If he bus owns the bus. I love Ebony, but Ebony's face was like, mm-hmm, mm. -hmm, mm. <laughs> there are benefits to dating a bus driver. Because let me tell you something. If you are dating a bus driver and you ain't got no car, you tell all your girlfriends, girl, my man gonna pick us all up. <laughs> Have you ever tried to do a little something something on them buses at night with your man? Get on that bus with your man at nighttime. Maybe he'll let you touch his wheel. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> Ebony, you ever heard that song? The wheels on the bus go round and round. Round and round. Round and round. <laughs> now I wanted to play that clip of Sherry Shepard because number one, it's funny. Like her commentary on the Ebony K. Williams stuff is funny. But when I saw it, I was like, wait a minute, Sherry Shepard dated down and Lamar Sally came for her really, really bad. Imagine being as successful as Sherry Shepard, then dating a TV writer. Now here's the thing, again, not shitting on TV writers. There's a whole actor strike going on right now, Hollywood. Hollywood is built off of the backs of TV writers, right? But this man was not making anywhere near what Sherry was making. They get married. They have a baby via surrogate. Do you know this man had the nerve to have a whole affair on Sherry Shepard? Like, imagine Sherry, like, you're not making anywhere near what she's making. You go and you have an affair on her. You have a child with this woman. And then you come for her coin, like literally came for her several times in court, tried to get a ridiculous amount of child support money from this woman. This is what she got from dating down. And we're not even going to talk about Wendy Williams, the woman who used to see, who used to sit in the seat that Sherry Shepard sat. What happened with her and her husband? We're not going to talk about Mary J. Blige. We're not going to talk about Holly Berry. We're not, we're not going to talk about all the black women that we've seen publicly date down and what they got for it. Like, please stop being pu purposely obtuse when black women are airing out their grievances about being the breadwinners. Are we going to sit here and act as, as if black women don't date down every day? Like... The comments that she got, I'm just, I was looking at some of these comments, some of these tweets, and somebody, I saw this one tweet that said, um, first of all, bus drivers, I can guarantee you, bus drivers 35 years uh, and older, men, male bus drivers who are 35 years and older, I can guarantee you most of them are married. Yeah, and who is marrying them? Who is marrying them? Who are they marrying? They're not marrying Margaret. <laughs> okay. They're, they're not marrying uh, Becky. No. Their families pushed them to marry up. Right? And again, it's not a downgrade on the bus driver. And I want to talk about this too. I feel like so many people, the bus driver is about... Iyanla using that bus, I really wish she didn't use that because then it became an attack on bus drivers. When, if you listen to the full video, this was not an attack on bus drivers or everyday workers. I think we can all agree that if we never understood it before, the pandemic showed us that we ain't shit without everyday workers. We ain't shit without that. I've had everyday jobs. I wouldn't be shit. If I didn't have that, I have bus drivers in my family, but at the same time, I think that a lot of us are being purposely obtuse there. I saw so many uh, comments. Well, bus drivers make six figures. How long does it take for a bus driver to make that? How many hours does it take for a bus drivers to make that type of money? 
Here in Atlanta, the median, the median salary for a bus driver is $57,000. That is nothing. And then even if you do make six figures, you make $100,000, that is nothing. You are still broke. Y'all, we are in a recession. Like, why are we, why are we being purposely obtuse and acting as if black women do not marry blue collar men every single day? We do. We do. That's not the problem. The problem is you have men saying we're not feminine. And then they want to date up. They want to date women who make more. And then as the woman that makes more, unfortunately, you're expected to do more. And so now you're carrying the load. And now you're not having space to be in your femininity because you're doing everything. You are carrying the financial load while being the mom. Like if you watch the full video, Ayala talks about building, the difference between building and creating. Building, you do with your hands, right? Building. But then as women, we do something called creating. We do that, right? And so a lot of times women who are financially the head of the household, we're doing both. We're tired. We're tired. We're tired. And, and I'm telling you this as somebody who's never been married. I've never been married, never been engaged, right? Just dating someone who doesn't make as much has been tiring mentally. The, like, I'll give you guys an example. I met someone probably two years ago. I, I feel like I've shared this before. Dude was a car salesman. We meet through a mutual friend. He realizes who I am, right? He sees how I'm moving. All of a sudden, he's not a car salesman anymore. He's an investor, a full-time investor, right? All I did was ask this man, how did you go from selling cars? You get a car, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car, you know, how do you go from the dealership to now you Jeff Bezos all of a sudden? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you do that? The man got so upset, like literally. I was like, hey, how did you go from, you know, two weeks ago you were a car salesman, like, so how did you go from being an investor? He's like, he just was so impatient, like so upset. What do you mean? I'm like, well, how do you do that full time? Like, help me understand. I've never invested. And this is me trying to understand which is the truth. I've never invested. I've never been an investor. I want to start investing my money. I really do need to start doing that. So I'm like, you know, how do you do that? Well, I have this app that does, that tells me how to invest. And you know, I have, I do this thing on my, on my chalkboard at home. And I was like, okay, so you were making a certain amount of money selling cars. Are you making that now as an investor or are you making more? This nigga went over the edge. I mean, like he was dead ass angry that I was asking him these questions. And here's the thing. As a single woman who has no responsibilities other than my body, I have to ask you these questions because God forbid something happens, we get it on, now I'm pregnant. I don't know what your financial standing is, what, what state I'm in. Like you could come for me financially. Or, or what if like we got married or something like you can come for me financially and I hardly don't even know what your financial standing is, right? But this man took it as his response to me, like he went quiet on me and we didn't talk to each other for a couple weeks. When I asked that man to break down for me if he was making the same, like around the same now that he was full-time investing, this nigga went ham. Like he wasn't having that. He went ghost on me. So we didn't talk. I didn't give a fuck. But he comes back and he's like, oh, I just felt like you were calling me a broke nigga. You was calling me a broke nigga. You, you was trying to call me broke for, for, for trying to ask me the breakdown of what I was making. And I'm like, I, I said, did I call you broke? He's like, no. I said, did I dictate to you what you were making? No. Did I tell you you're not making enough? No. 
So how did I call you broke? I was asking you questions because I need to understand how you went from being a car salesman to being Elon Musty in two weeks. How did you go from selling cars to owning Twitter in two weeks? I need to know that. I need to know that because we're seeing each other. And at the time, this is a person like, I was casually, you know, you know what I'm saying? I was getting, you know, so I didn't, I didn't know what the fuck going on. Okay. I didn't know what the fuck going on because God forbid something happens. I need to know financially where you stand. I need to understand that. Right. But him saying that I was calling him broke, that was him projecting how he already felt about himself. He felt broke. He was broke. And to be quite honest, he was. The whole investment, the whole him being an investor thing, that was all a fucking lie. He was no fucking investor, okay? But he was broke. He felt broke. And I think that's another layer to the conversation that we don't really get to see in this interview. We do, however, I really feel like that needs to be addressed. The attitude that these men project unto us because they already feel less worthy because they make less when literally we're not even coming at you like that. We want to know financially where you stand a lot of times. So we know where we stand with you. Black women date men that make less than them all the time. I've seen it in my family, in my friends, and it still doesn't work. And I think a big part of that is because men's masculinity is so fucking frail. Like we don't talk, they don't like to talk about how frail their masculinity is, especially when it comes to them not making as much or more than you. And then so now you as the woman, they're already painting you out to be masculine when all you are doing is having a job. Look at um, Perfect Match. Remember the Perfect Match? And I had a whole video on it. On it. When Dominique called Colony a strong black woman. Oh, she a strong black woman. Because she had a job. Because she was the only woman there with a notable job. That's how black men approach us. Imagine being in a relationship with someone like that. Like, imagine. I imagine being in a relationship with someone like that who gets offended from you just asking questions about their finances. Imagine that, right? I think that that's a, a layer that we're not talking about. And it's so funny that I'm mentioning this guy because literally I went against like my gut because like Ebony, I was like, okay, maybe there's something I'm doing wrong. Let me kind of just like, you know, dim it down a bit. I took advice from one of my male friends who is our mutual and I kept seeing this guy. This guy one time called me, this dude would go on to call me unfeminine. He comes over one day, I greet him at the door, I hug him, you know, and he's coming in and you know, he's like really like trying to tongue me down and stuff. I'm like, hey, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to keep it cute. And he's like, yo, like, you know, the greeting, like, it's just, it wasn't feminine enough. Like, you're, you're, not, you're not feminine. You need to be in your femininity. You're not feminine. I'm like, what? What do you mean I'm not feminine? The way you greeted me, you see the way I'm on you. Like, I was on you. You're not on me. Like, maybe you don't miss me as much as I, as, as much as I missed you. I told you I really missed you. You said you missed me, but you're not acting like it. And I'm like, I hugged you at the door, bro. Like, I hugged you. I kissed you. What is not feminine about that? He's like, yeah, it's just not feminine enough for me. And that shit, it really fucked with me because I'm just like, the nerve of this nigga to come into my home, right? Empty handed, de me vide, de me vide, two, two, two empty hands, de, de me vide, de me vide, two empty hands, de me vide, okay? No flowers, no candy, no card. Eh, 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 no, no, eh, 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 no, no cash app, no, eh, eh, no, no, you know, no gift, no flowers, no nothing. But you expect me to just be so feminine. Like, how are you setting up an environment for me to be as feminine as you want me to be? And some people will say, oh, well, you, you know, if, if you're not feminine on your own, then that, that you, you, you can't. You, a man can't make you feminine. That's something that lies within you. 
And while that's true, <laughs> while that is very true, y'all don't think that if you come into someone's home and you give them a card, you give them flowers, you give them candy, you give them something or sh give them a gesture, something to show, hey, I've been thinking about you. You don't think that the femininity is going to skyrocket? Like now you're, now you're setting an environment for that. You're pulling, like, you're pulling that out of her. She already has it, but now you're tugging it, you're tugging at it even more. Imagine having those type of issues with a brokey. Literally, with a brokey. I'm tired. So I can't even imagine, I can't even imagine being married to one. I watched my mom be married to a brokey, two brokies, okay? But really, I couldn't, you know, my, my father, he was a, a drug addict. And I've told y'all this many times. This is why I know a crackhead when I see one. My daddy was a crackhead. I know a crackhead when I see one. But I watched my mother literally build with my stepfather. And she ended, it, it, it was as if she could have, just took the money and threw it in the air in the street. My mom literally put my stepfather through electrician school. Y'all know, like, being an electrician, especially like in the 90s, I don't know how it works now with AI and everything um, and automated systems and all that, but being an electrician back in the 90s, in the early 2000s, bitch. 80s, 70s, you know what I mean? Like, put him through electrician school. That nigga, were, that man worked at a car rental service. She put him through electrician school. That man stayed at that car rental service. And my mom was always the breadwinner. And when it came time for me to go to college, my mom did not have money to send me to college. So just like Ebony is saying how, you know, she didn't have her father present. So she didn't have a present male figure to be there financially for her. I can, I can attest to that. And so I'm, as for me, I'm already coming into the dating world tired. Tired. Because my mom was tired. And being the firstborn, you can only imagine. That's a whole other YouTube video, being the firstborn, okay? Check on your friends who are the firstborns. We is the, it's a, well, girl, we got a lot of trauma. But I'm already coming into this tired because my mother was tired. My mother was tired. She was struggling. And so I had to come in this thing already working, already busting my ass. So where is the relief for me? And so now I have to, now I have to carry the load financially in my relationship too? What? This is ghetto! This is ghetto! I wanna play this other clip from the, from the interview because I, I think it's really good. Uh, you said that women are being trained to be men in skirts. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I will acknowledge, I will I will say I was triggered, I was a hit dog, and I hollered to, to the entire production team to, to get you here today, because I, I actually think you're right. I think you're right, Ayanla. I do think um, that, I'll just speak for myself vulnerably, uh, when I think of a masculine um, posture and what I would expect a man to do in my life, uh, two things come top of mind, and they are provide and they are protect. And when my lived experience, um, and I, I think I'm still relatively young, I guess, but I'm 40 in, in, in September. So, you know, I've, I've, I've had some, some relationships. And I've yet to find a man who has shown up, and this includes even my father, who was absent. I've yet to have a male energy that provided or protected me consistently ever. Mm -hmm. So I think that mm -hmm. I have taken on the reins to protect and provide for myself. Because what I'm not going to do, mm -hmm. Ayanla, is be without, baby. It's not happening. Be without what? So that be would without be without protection, be without protection, okay. and be okay. without the necessities of life. 
Okay. So, so, okay. but, but, but I say that with an invitation, Ayanla, check me, show me the error of my ways. <laughs> Tell me how I might be missing it because I might be. Okay. I too am an alpha woman. So I understand what that means. And I tell people all the time, I was a horrible mother. I was a horrible mother. I was a great father. <laughs> and I was a horrible mother mm. because I had never been mothered. So I didn't know how to affirm, mm -hmm. how to nurture, how to nourish, how to um, guide. I knew how to direct, how to demand, how to discipline. And like you said, provide mm -hmm. and protect. Those are masculine energies. And the, the distinction here is men build, women create. So we know how to hmm. build. We know how to get to the external and get the work done and drive and push and do it, do it, do it. We don't know how to be still, create it, and allow it to come to us. And I learned that when I lost everything. I learned how hmm. to create because I had already built and it all crumbled. The house, the hmm. husband, the job, the contracts, the professional career in the world, sure. stripped of it all. All the attachments, the necessities of life, the creature comforts, right. until I was stripped down to the hmm. bare bone. And then I had to learn how not to build. Build is external. Create is internal. And we as women have the power to create and attract anything we desire. But we don't get hmm. still. We won't shut up and we manage everything through fear, control, and survival, mm -hmm. as opposed to feeling, knowing, and blooming or flourishing. Complete different thing. But since we've never been trained, we haven't been trained, we haven't been taught. So we do it the way we were taught to do it, which is very masculine in nature. And very external. That's I feel you, 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 that you are describing me to a T, Miss Yanla. I, I just had a thought. Show me if you show me a masculine woman, I can show you a woman who didn't have a masculine father figure in her life. If you can show me a masculine woman, I can show you a woman who most likely did not have a masculine father figure in her life. And that's what this sounds like with Ebony as she's breaking down the fact that she's never had a male figure in her life ever who constantly provided for her and protected her. I feel seen in that. My daddy was a crackhead, okay? So yeah, he wasn't gonna protect nothing but that powder, okay? <laughs> that's all he was gonna protect was that powder, baby. He wasn't trying to protect my ass, okay? You know, and then again, I kind of shine a light on my, my mom getting remarried. My stepfather, worthless. To this day, worthless, okay? And so, I mean, I, I can't even tell you something. I can't, I can't pinpoint you one time in my life that my stepfather was there for me. Cannot. And that is just... Figuratively, emotionally, or even financially. I can't tell you one. I can't tell you one. So, again, you have a lot of women like me coming into this. This is how we're coming in. And then we're being told that we need to lower our expectations. So it's like, this is just a low experience. It is a low vibrational experience all around. Like, that's just what it is as a black woman. You know, I, um, I remember going to college, you know, in, sc in school, I was exposed to a lot of different cultures, a lot of different races. I, I grew up in, in, in South Florida. Um, and I was exposed to a lot of different cultures, you know, Jewish, Indian, Hispanic, Asian. And when I tell you, it's been my experience that black women are the only ones who are beat down to accept the lowest of the low because that's just what's available. And there's not a conversation. There's not a beating down of the men in our community to build themselves up as much as black women are beat down to reach lower. 
It's just, it like, I feel like it's only in our community. There's a whole show on Netflix. Maybe I should do a, a, a review on that. Indian matchmaking. Baby, they not, they not going out for the bus driver. And again, this is not about, I'm saying bus driver figuratively speaking, uh, figuratively speaking. They are taught to aim high. The women are taught to aim high because simply for, for the simple fact that as a woman, they value the fact that you are going to carry on their name and carry on their legacy and push out what's going to come next, what, what, the next layer of their family. Just for that, just for that, you are the table as a woman. And so there are dowries, there are expenses that are paid just to put you in the best position to aim higher when you're going to marry. Baby, that's not the black experience. It's just not. And it's ghetto. Um, I just really, really liked... I wanted just to play more of the interview with Iyanla and, and, and Ebony. Because if you watch the, the interview itself, it is a very, very good interview. Now, Iyanla, she knew what she was doing asking her the, the whole would you date a bus driver thing because Iyanla is a producer. Iyanla knows how to produce moments. She knew exactly what she was doing. Again, I wish she would have asked her, hey, what are you looking for character-wise in a man? But she knew. Iyanla knew what she was doing. At the same time, if you watch the video, there's a lot of insight on both sides. You have Ebony who brings the facts, and then you have Iyanla who brings perspective. And at the end of it, I think that they both had a very, very good conversation. Um, and I think that that's where it should have just been left. Here is where Ebony went wrong. So out of the 50,000 plus comments posted on social, I only saw a handful that even considered the possibility of a bus owner being a more aspirational position and recognizing that I am actually speaking and pouring into the ascension of black men when I said what I said. But see, no, some of y'all were too busy naming and shaming me personally and black women in general as undesirable, gold diggers, and much worse. Now, I suspect that some of y'all are the same men that were bringing home C's and D's on your report cards, only to then be coddled by parents that said, well, that's okay, as long as you're doing your best. Well, listen, I love and believe in the excellence of black men. So no, my dear, C's and D's or any other form of mediocrity is not okay. No, I will not create a soft place for you or anybody that I love to fall comfortably into the bigotry of low expectations. So I'm gonna say one more time, there's absolutely nothing wrong with driving a bus. My mother Gloria drove one for years. But could it be that black America has been sold a narrative of average, regular, and typical being good enough for us? Hmm. Well, see, that's called white supremacy. And in this case, it takes the form of conditioning black Americans to happily accept being a permanent American underclass. But see, because I know the truth about black folk in America, no, average is not and will never be good enough for me. And the gag is, I don't think it's good enough for you either. Baby, you said what you said. That's it. You don't have nothing to explain to anybody. You said nothing wrong. You said nothing wrong. I want to drive. I want to date the man who owns a bus. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. You said nothing wrong. God forbid. These men, these men get on their ashy ass microphones every day to tell us that we're not their preferences. Girl, it's nothing wrong with you telling the world that that's not your preference. There's nothing wrong with that. And I hate the fact that people have like browbeated her and you know, and, and I, I'm glad that she stuck to her guns, but I really wish you never said anything. The response that you gave, you ate. You ate. Ebony ate. Ebony ate that. But here's the problem with responding to outrage is number one, now you're prolonging the outrage. Number two, now you're giving people more material to be outraged about. Okay? 
if he owns the bus, that was good enough. You said nothing wrong. I'll never forget when I was a kid, I used to ride Monsieur Fresnel's bus. <laughs> Monsieur Fresnel was a neighborhood bus driver. He was a Haitian guy. He bought a bus. Uh, it was a it was, it was what we Haitians would call a jitney. Uh, I said to jitney li. Et puis dit comme ça au contact passé. Bon, tout le monde paye him. I will pick up your kids for you. You pay me monthly. I will pick up your kids from you from school and to school every day. And I think my mom paid him like two hundred dollars a month to take me to school every day. The man had a busload of kids. He was an entrepreneur. He didn't want to be the bus driver for the school district. He wanted to have his own bus and he did that. What is wrong with wanting a man who does that? What is wrong with wanting a man who has a vision? So now he has this bus and then within a couple years, he's going to have a fleet of buses that he owns. What is wrong with wanting a man who does that? Again, as a Haitian girl, a lot of my Haitian friends, their dads were taxi drivers. But guess what? Their dads own their taxi. Their dads own their taxi. What is wrong with wanting the guy who owns the taxi? There's nothing wrong with that. He's a boss. He's a boss. He's not Jeff Bezos, but he's a boss. He's answering to himself. That's someone who has a vision. What is wrong with that? And not saying that people who answer to people don't have vision. But I'm saying for sure, for sure, that man who owns his taxi, he damn sure does. I don't know. I can't assure that you have one, but I know he does for sure. I used to work at call centers. Baby, I worked next to a lot of people who had a vision for nothing. No vision. Nothing. Their vision was getting overtime. Seriously, I saw it all the time. Why are we being purposely obtuse here and acting as if mediocrity is not glorified in our community when it is, especially when it comes to men? Like the men are coddled. They are. We see it all the times. Those of us who, who, who have siblings, the way that our mothers treat our brothers versus us, especially those of us who are African and Caribbean, Hispanic, Indian, the immigrants. Oh, please drop down in the comments if you are immigrant. If you are an immigrant, make some noise right now. Clap, 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 clap. Ba 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 okay, okay, okay. Those of you who just clap, I will bet my lace front wigs. I will bet this wig that if you are a girl and you have male siblings, that your parents coddled your male siblings at a criminal level compared to how they treated you. And they coddle these men and then these men go into society and they have to be, they get to be coddled there too. Because the women were beat down to accept less. Okay. Ebony K. Williams really went wrong when she went on The Breakfast Club. Let me tell you something. The Breakfast Club does not do their research. It was very clear that DJ Envy did not watch the full video. It was very clear that DJ Envy saw a thread somewhere on the internet where somebody outed you. <laughs> and I'm saying outed in a very funny way, but outed you for having a white fiance, right? And so now his talking point was gonna be, oh, oh, so you talking black issues, but you had a white fiance. You talking black issues. You don't care about black people issues cause you got a white fiance. He thought he ate that. He thought he ate that. But let me offer you a different perspective. Think about it this way, that out of all the black men that Ebony dated, it was a white man that put a ring on her finger. It was a white man that put a ring on her finger. It was a white man that was willing to build something serious with her. Now, I don't know the breakdown. I'm not going to go into speculation. I'm not going to do all that. I'm not going to do all that. Because she don't owe y'all that. Nobody owes y'all that. 
but it was a white man who saw her serious enough, who saw enough value in her that said, let me marry this woman. I want to get married to her. And remember, Ebony said to Iyanla in the interview, I've dated across the spectrum. What am I doing wrong? Maybe you need to stop dating across the spectrum. Maybe you need to stick to the niggas who are putting rings on your fingers, Ebony. Yeah. Stick, stick to the niggas who are putting rings on your fingers. That's my perspective on that. Do your research before you have people come in. Because the thing is, now what DJ Envy was doing, it was very irresponsible to try to flip the narrative now to, oh, you have a white fiance. And when he wasn't able to flip that, now it was, oh, but you made people feel, you made people feel. Feelings are not facts. Feelings are not facts. And a, 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 a big fact here is that a lot of people did not listen to a word this girl said in this interview. So they lacked perspective. And so they went on about their feelings from clickbait. This is the society that we live in now where y'all are not listening and doing your research before you react to something. You're not going to get perspective. You're just going on all this misinformation that platforms like The Breakfast Club do. If you would have listened, if you would have listened to the full interview, DJ Envy, you would have saw the perspective. That was really irresponsible to not present it as a whole and to just bark down on her like that and try to take that angle of you have a white fiance. I'll never forget how DJ Envy did the girls of Selling Tampa. Until this day, I believe the Breakfast Club was single-handedly responsible for Selling Tampa not coming back. I really do. Because DJ Envy got on the radio and talked about how they ain't selling no homes, they ghetto, like just really talked down on these girls and did not do his research to see that it was literally a franchise that was an offspring of Selling Sunset, where Selling Sunset, you have these women on the show who are fucking their boss. Fucking their boss, not even sell, hardly selling homes, fucking their bosses, doing everything else but selling homes. And, and the most we saw in Selling Tampa was a couple arguments, literally. They weren't giving a fair chance. You never invite them on the show for them to tell their part. I think I saw um, I saw a couple of them in your comments. Invite us to the show. They never got invited. You didn't give them a fair sh chance. I really want you to stop doing that. If you care about black issues, please be responsible in how you position black stories, especially when women, black women are at the center because we get attacked so much and Unfortunately, that platform has, has been a platform that has created a lot of space for that to happen. Please stop doing that. Give us the fair chance. Listen, you should have listened to the interview and you should have seen that Ebony was very, very open and very receptive to what Iyanla said. That was like, honestly, that hurt. Watching that really, really hurt. It hurt. It really hurt. I didn't like it at all. Um, I want to leave y'all with this. I found this clip of Jackie Ina saying this. And again, I really feel again that Ebony, this is where you fucked up at. And this is where a lot of us as black women, we need to stop fucking up at. I refuse to defend myself in every situation anymore. It's like not in my DNA anymore. Because when I realize like, Oh, you didn't like me even when I was literally like not bothering anyone when I was perfect. Mm. So then I was like, okay, I had to ask myself when you defend yourself, why do you do that? Why do you okay. do that? This is what I asked. This is what I had to ask myself. And then I realized, well, because it's about what it's about, like the optics, it's about reputation. And when I ultimately had to realize is like, there's your reputation and then your, there's your character. Your reputation is always going to change. Crumble it up and throw it away. Your character isn't. I'm not explaining myself to you. You ask me a question, I'm going to answer it. That's that. You don't like my answer? Move the fuck on. I don't got nothing to explain to you. 
whether it's my preference, whether it's a, whatever it is. I don't got nothing to explain to you, okay? And I think that with Ebony, she was trying to smooth things over. You said nothing wrong. These men get online and tell us their preferences all the time. You said nothing wrong. And, and the gag is, your preference wants you. Their preferences don't want them. And they're losing access to their preference. That's why they're all squirming the way they are, because Ebony K. Williams is a preference. But they're losing access to that preference. And now you have a lot of black women speaking up about what they want. We just need to stop doing that. Like for, for me, as, as for me, I'm not going to talk about my preferences publicly. Like that's not what I'm doing no more. It's not a safe, it, it's just not safe to do that. It's not a safe environment. I just know me, if Ebony K. Williams is getting shit, shit it on like this, I know my, I know my dark skin ass. I know y'all, y'all, I know y'all, y'all not going to see it for my ass if I say what my preference is, baby. Y'all not going to see it for me. Y'all not going to see it for me. Y'all gonna definitely tell me, girl, shut the fuck up, Seely, and get what the fuck you can get. If that's what y'all doing to her, who's clearly a preference, oh, I know. Y'all ain't gonna see it for me. Stop talking about what y'all want and just go get it. Because the gag is, black women, our preferences actually do prefer us. We just need to put ourselves in better position to be there. Stop explaining yourself to anybody during black women's. I'm not one of your little friends. I'm gonna really give you something to cry about in a minute, Black Mama Month. There are people out there who are literally obsessed and committed to misunderstanding you. And so it doesn't matter what you actually said. They're still gonna put words in your mouth. They're still gonna talk about how it came across. They are committed to misunderstanding you. The, the videos that I've seen people make here on YouTube just based off of that first clip where all Ebony said was, well, I'd date him if he owned the bus. I mean, the dissertations, the breakdowns that people had when that's all she said and she said nothing wrong. Girl, people are committed to misunderstanding you. Okay? And so, Ebony, girl, I think that your biggest lesson in all this, when you say something, girl, stand on that shit. And as black women, when we say we want certain things, let's just stand on that and let's just learn to actually support each other. You know, we're always saying how old the world, the world don't like black women. Black women don't like black women. And literally like this attack on Ebony K. Williams really proved that. Black women don't like black women. Black women don't like seeing a black woman, you know, stand up for herself. I, I really, I thought we tweet and we upload as if we do, but we really don't. And that is something that honestly, that's just a whole other topic. The fact that we really just really don't support each other for real, for real. Like it just be a lot of fake support and it's just weird. The, 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 the women empowerment brunches are not working. Okay. Um, anyway, y'all drop down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on this subject matter. Um, you know what I'm considering reviewing too is Bridgerton. I haven't watched it yet, but it's black. It's black. Queen Charlotte. We talking about Queen Charlotte. Okay, I might do a review on that. So let me know if you guys want to see that as well. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe. I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.